Good morning, everyone, or afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from. My name is Ryan Field. I'm an application engineer here with Computer Aided Technology based out of our Cleveland, Ohio office. Uh, so why are we talking about this topic today? There is that old saying we know, um, that everyone knows here, that slow and steady wins the race. Uh, while this, the sentiment of that story and the moral of that story is good, I think we all know that's not really true. Right. Creating our designs as efficiently as possible is very important right? to um, the minimum amount of times we're given to get our designs done. Um, and these assemblies, once we put them together, uh, once they're constructed, they're really powerful. Right? We get that digital clone of our model, of our design, long before we actually build a prototype. Uh, we can do a lot of evaluation, like interferences, clearances, uh, motion, get the, the accurate weights of our assemblies. But putting them together can take some time. Um, and to get them to act exactly how we want them um, sometimes can, can take a while. So what we want to do today is look at some different ways that we can more efficiently create those assemblies. Uh, we're going to do it through um, three different topics um, or three different categories here. The first one is going to be speed, right? those standard mates that we use all the time. And we're going to look at quicker, uh, better, just more efficient ways of applying them. We'll then uh, look at power here, which is, which is when those standard mates aren't quite cutting it. I'll uh, look at some of the more advanced mates that we have. And then finally, um, innovation. All right, we'll look at some of the newer mating tools that we have available to us that can help us um, with our assembly designs. Okay, so first off here in the speed category, um, right, we're all familiar with our standard mates, right? Very easy to do, the coincident, parallel, perpendicular, right? Those standard mates for getting our um, assemblies together exactly how we want them. Uh, we know how to do that. We go into the command manager, we select um, the paper clip, we go into the um, feature manager here and, and click the mates that we want, the faces that we want, and that's just, that's a lot of um, clicks, right? It's easy to do, but a lot of cl clicks. So we're going to look at uh, how to more efficiently create those here th with three different um, methods. Right here, we're, first we're going to look at utilizing the context menu, um, then t taking advantage of smart mates, and then to take the, the smart mates even a step further, uh, utilizing what's called mate references that we can build into our parts. Okay, so let's jump over here into SolidWorks. You see we have this little stovetop layout. Um, some pretty basic mates that we're going to want to put in here. And this first one, we'll just do, do the standard way. Right? We just want to make a co coincident and concentric mate to snap this first burner into place. Uh, we go up to our command manager, select the, the mate tool, and all those standard mates show up. We can then go over and just select the faces that we want to mate. Um, and SolidWorks you know, does a pretty good job of knowing which mate based off the selection that we made that we want to do. We can lock the rotation there if we want. We're not going to quite do that yet. Um, then staying in the command, we can select the other faces here and add another mate. Um, it conveniently knows that probably wanted a coincident mate there. Um, again, all well and good, but it's a lot, a lot of clicks that, that um, we had to do to get there. So the first one here is utilizing the context menu. Um, that's by holding down control um, instead of and pre making a pre-selection. Right, we'll go ahead and hold down control, select our two faces. When we let go of control, this context menu pops up with an intelligent selection of mates based off of the selection we made, where we can quickly add that in without having to go into the mate command itself. Then we can do the same thing, add our other mate. Um, what I want to show here is a uh, another nice tool for essentially breaking, um, temporarily breaking mates that we have with the component preview window. Here, if we have a part in position um, partially and we can't get to the face we want, we can open this component preview window and make the selection in a side panel or preview there and add it to, um, it selects it in the main model there um, to allow us to easily get to those faces instead of hiding components or breaking mates and moving those around. Next here, I'm going to utilize my breadcrumbs to edit that mate. Um, and we saw before we could click that lock rotation. Um, here, I'm going to go in and just do it manually using breadcrumbs to access that mate. Let's say I forgot to do it um, the first time that I wanted to do it, uh, to fully define that burner in the place there. All right, I'm going to delete that mate out. Um, and I'm going to open up this component. Because what I want to do next is add added that in utilizing smart mate. What I'm going to do is just um, open up that part and um, vertical tile our um, windows here. And what I can do is if I just grab a face or an edge in the part that I have and drag it into my model, 
it's, you see a little symbol there, it's looking to create a planar um, mate or coincident mate wherever I face that I drop that on. Um, so quickly and easily adding that mate into place. Um, what's really nice though is we can do two mates at once here. If I select this adjacent edge between the cylindrical and planar face, when I drag that over, see that uh, shaft and slot symbol there? Um, what it's doing is actually adding both those mates at once. If I um, view the mates here of this um, part, I can see that it added a concentric mate to the shaft of that adjacent edge and a coincident mate to the face. So quickly adding two, two mates at once, um, which is really nice. All right, so what if I have my part already in the model? I don't want to open it up and split the screen. Um, we know that if we drag a part around, it's not automatically trying to snap into place. Or if I grab that edge, you know, nothing happens here. Um, but what I can do to do that, essentially, is hold down the Alt key. And I select that edge, hold down Alt, um, start to move my part around. It'll turn transparent, and it acts just like that component um, that we had, the, the split screen. Um, so quickly snapping that into place. Um, quick thing, uh, you can, once it turns transparent, you can let go of the Alt key. Um, you don't need to have that edit anymore. I can then also uh, right-click on my Mate um, folder there and lock the rotation of all my components. It was a nice tool added about 2014, I believe, um, to, if you forget or you want to go back and lock down all your mates, you have, we have the ability to do that. All right, last thing we want to add in here is the knobs. Um, so these are maybe a component that we use in all of our different stovetop designs here. Um, and this here we're going to utilize the mate references. Of course, we can use the smart mates or the context menu just like we did before. Just grab that edge, hold down Alt, and I can snap that into place. But we'll take that a step further with the mate references. Um, so we don't even actually have to open those components um, and have them in the model. What I'm going to do is open that component and build that, essentially, that smart mate into the part. Now, it's called a mate reference, so it's going to be a reference geometry that we're adding to the model. So under reference geometry, if I select mate references, you can see here the different options that we have, um, tangent, coincident, parallel, concentric, so those standard mates there. But what I'm going to do is leave it on default, and I'm going to select that um, edge between the con concentric and coincident face there, or the planar and the cylindrical face, I should say. I get a mate references folder, and there's that mate reference that shows up in my uh, model. So now if I go back over into design, or my assembly, I don't have to worry about that opening that part, splitting the screen, holding down all. I can just go over into my file explorer and drag that part in. And it's going to look at that mate reference and snap that into place without me having to worry about even opening the component, um, similar to how your toolbox components work. So just another way of quickly adding those standard mates into our design. Of course, any of those methods work, but as you can see, some of them are much um, quicker and more uh, convenient to do than going up into the command manager, selecting the mate, mate tool, and, and going that, that long way of doing it. So just a real quick recap of that, of those standard mates, of quickly adding those. Or the context menu, um, control key, right? Pre making a pre-selection of the uh, entities we want to mate. Um, and we let, the, let go of control, we get that um, context, intelligent context menu that pops up that knows which type of mates we can apply, and we can quickly select those. Um, smart mates. Uh, similar to that, uh, this time using the Alt key, where we can just drag, um, select the faces, pre-select the faces or edges, and drag those to where we want them, um, whether the component is in the assembly or in a, um, a tiled um, separate uh, window. And finally, for those standard parts, uh, taking those smart mates a step further, um, building those um, mates into the file themselves so that it knows when we bring it into the model where we what type of mate we want to add and allow it to snap it into place for us. A couple other quick uh, efficiency tools here. Uh, you saw the breadcrumbs. This was added a couple years ago. Um, just hitting the D key to have them show up at your mouse. Um, in 2019, actually, you won't even have to hit the D key. They'll just show up. They can just show up there for you. Um, this just gives you access to your mates, your reference geometry, your sketches, your features, all of the um, Anything you would need to go over in the feature tree or the command manager for, you can get access to right at your right at your mouse. Um, just minimizing your mouse travel there. The component preview window, get a nice tool um, if you've started to make something and you uh, those hard to reach um, faces. 
um, instead of hiding components or breaking um, mates to get access to, to them, um, use the component preview window to temporary, temporarily um, get access to all of your degrees of freedom on the part. And again, avoid using the command manager. Right? There's no need to have to go up um, and move all around the screen to select those features. Um, we can access them through the context menu or the, the, the shortcut tools that we have available. Okay, so now let's look at some of those more advanced mates that we have. And that's in that same mate toolbar, just the next tab down, uh, we have some of those advanced mates there. Um, ones we're going to talk about here uh, in this presentation is we'll look at the profile center mate, uh, and the width mate, um, some of the limit mates, and uh, the slot mate. Slot mate, you don't see on the list there. That's technically under the mechanical mates tab. Um, but we're going to take a look at that one anyway here today. So first, the profile center mate. What that does is it allows, basically allows you to stack parts and keep them centered in all, all directions um, for geometric profiles. So that grouping on the left, um, basically those parts that have a true center to them, we can um, utilize the profile center mate. The ones on the right where there's pieces missing of the profile or there's not necessarily a true center, those ones are not available uh, to utilize the profile center mate. Um, the width mate allows us to essentially center a component, one component inside of two other faces of a, uh, another other parts. Um, the limit mates, um, similar to that, but essentially constrains the movement within a specific range of values that we want to set. And similarly um, to those limit mates is a, the slot mate, which same type of um, motion that it gives us or constraints, but just with like a, a bolt that we're putting inside a slot, whether that's going to be um, a straight linear slot or, or an arc slot. All right, so let's take a look at how we can do that. I'm going to come back over here into SolidWorks, and we're going to open up another assembly here. Um, this one is like a monitor mount, something that we're going to make together. Now here we have, we can see this um, mounting bracket and that mounting pole there. We essentially want to center those on each other. So here I could select mate, um, but I'm actually going to use the S key here um, to access my mate command. So again, don't need to go into the command manager. And under advanced, um, you can see all of my different mate options are here. If I go ahead and select the um, width mate, I have two options there. I select the width, which is essentially my outer constraints. When I select the, um, the bottom and top face um, as the width, and then for the tab, essentially the components on what I want to have um, maintained within those two faces. By default, it's going to center that there, but I have a few different constraint options that I can choose. I can have it be free, essentially floating back and forth like a limit mate between those um, outer two constraints. I could put a dimension off of that bottom face of the width and the tab, or define that as a percent, which essentially 50% right, is going to be that centered uh, distance. What I'm going to do is put that in as free. And now I essentially have made a limit mate, but I didn't have to define any values. It just knows to stay in between there. Now trying to move that, that can be a little um, tricky, especially when we have a lot of parts, a lot of moving parts that still have degrees of freedom. Um, so we're going to take a look at another tool here, this temporary fix tool. It allows us to lock components down temporarily. By selecting that, I'm going to pick that part, and when I fix it, now that part is locked. I don't have to worry about I can see the motion of my width mate there without having to worry about that other part moving around in the design. All right. Here I'm going to utilize the um, breadcrumbs again, and I'm going to um, grab that width mate and delete it real quick just to um, apply it a different way. That context menu that we talked about before, that is available with the width mate as well. I can pre-select my four faces. And when I do that, right, the only mate available for four selections is the width mate. It shows up right there at my mouse, and I can make that selection. I'm going to easily allow me to, to apply that. Now, by default, it is going to be centered. Um, so what I'm going to do is just edit that tool and turn it back to free. All right, so now the profile center mate. Uh, we're going to mount these two, stack these two faces together here. So when I go into my uh, mate command, and choose a profile center mate. I'll pick the two planar faces that I want to mate. And it essentially is going to make them coincident and then really apply two, two width mates in the horizontal and vertical direction here. I can flip the orientation if I want. I can offset it. Right, so things we could do already 
um, with just multiple mates there, now all done within one powerful mate. So it's a really nice tool. I have that snapped into place there, applied that profile center mate. Now I don't have to worry about the size of those components, right? And if those change, like here on this mounting block, we'll make that a little bit bigger um, in the um, length and width. And I don't have to worry about um, repositioning or, or remating that, right? It's going to stay centered in both vertical and horizontal directions. So go ahead here and I will just turn it back to the original size. Again, staying centered in all, all those directions there. And the profile center mate is also available on the context menu and on cylindrical components as we saw on the, that image on the previous slide. So I'll control select those two edges, choose profile center mate, put this little button here to lock rotation. And now I've locked the fully defined my uh, screw there with one mate. Right, select the edges, profile center mate, centers it in all directions, and the lock rotation option in there fully defines that screw with one, um, with one mate. A really nice tool to be able to do that. Right, next, we'll go ahead and add the slot mate up to um, the mounting bracket here. So here, we'll go ahead in and use our S key again to access our mate options. Um, this time, I'll go under mechanical mates. When I choose slot, um, I can go ahead and choose either a tangent edge of the curved or linear slot that we have, and then the cylindrical shaft of the pin that's going to move back and forth between there. You see I have the same options that I have with the width mate. I can center it or position it based off of a distance or a percentage, or allow it to be free floating within um, that uh, constraint of the slot that we have. I'm going to define this as a percent here. Now I've positioned that um, pin within, the, within my slot. Then our last mate here, uh, we're going to put in a limit angle mate. Um, here, if you've ever done this before, sometimes you can end up with, uh, or even just a regular angle mate, you go in to put in this, say, 30 degree angle, and the supplementary angle shows up, right? We get um, 150 shows up, and you can't figure out why, um, which we'll do that here. And here it actually worked out okay, but let's look at how, if it doesn't, how, what we could do. Uh, we have this option to choose a reference entity where I can select this axial um, cylinder here, and I can choose which quadrant I want to define that angle off of. So maybe it's just the, the right or the left one there if you're getting the 150 degree angle. But now since I'm in a limit mate, I'll just go in and define my minimum and my maximum distances, and I temporarily uh, define the current position. Now I have that mate. Um, snapped into place. Again, that motion of all those moving components is a little tough to see, so I'll go ahead and use my fixed, um, temporary fixed group option, and now I can move that part back and forth. Um, I don't have to worry about my other components uh, moving around accidentally on me. Okay, so just a quick uh, preview or uh, wrap up of these four mate types. Right, the profile center mate, really powerful um, mate that uh, essentially does two width mates and a coincident mate all at once. Um, fully can fully define our components with, with one mate there. Um, the width mate, um, again, not have to worry about size or making sure our, we have planes through the middle of our parts to align those up. Um, and we have that freedom to choose different constraint options, whether it be position it somewhere within that off-center or allow it to float free within the constraints that we have. Uh, the limit distance and the slot mate, again, essentially allowing those components to move back and forth within the given um, values or the diff give, given positions that we or values that we've defined. And again, still do not need to use the command manager, right? Even for those more advanced mates that are not available in the context menu, uh, use the S key, use uh, shortcuts or mouse gestures to access the the commands without having to go up into the command manager to do that. All right, our last topic here is some of the more in innovative mating options that we have available to us. Um, these are both relatively new within the last couple years. Um, I think Mate Controller maybe 2016 and Magnetic Mates 2017, I think. Um, but let's take a look at the, some use cases of those. So the mate controller, as you can see in this example here, this robot moving around and the arm changing, it create it can, an easy way to create motion uh, based off the mates that we've defined. So let's go ahead in and look at an example of that. We're going to use that same um, model that we were just looking at, that um, 
essentially that uh, monitor uh, mount. So I open up that assembly. Remember, we built in a few different mate options there. Right? We had the ability to, for the arm to be moved up, a main mounting plate to be moved up and down. The mounting block there for the monitor can rotate along the slot and that angle mate that we've added. So here I'm going to go into the mate controller. And I can manually go in and select the mates options that are available for um, this tool. Essentially, it's the mates that have values defined to them. Or what I can do is use this little paper clip um, and lightning bolt symbol. And that will grab all the mates that are available for the mate controller for us. Now, this is another good example of where it's good to rename your mates so you know exactly what you're controlling. And we can reposition them in here. That's just how they're going to show up down in the mate positions below. So here we have our first position, and it's basically how they're all positioned currently. I can go ahead and add as many positions as I want. I can name them something unique here. Um, and then I can just control that position of that mate. I can do it with the slider bar. <coughs> I can position it exactly how I want it, and then update that position. So I've created multiple positions um, of that mate. Um, add another position here. I can use the slider bar again to change this slot mate. What I can also do is lock the movement, and I can go over to the graphics area and just move the component myself to get it exactly where I want it. When I'm done, I can unlock that and update that new position that we've created. And we can continue on doing this to create as much uh, motion as we want. And it doesn't have to just be one at a time. Here, I'll go ahead and update both these limit angles at once. I'll reposition this first one here for position four, and then the um, angular position of that um, mounting bracket as well. When I change both of those, I'll go ahead in and update that position. And just one last thing I like to do is I usually like to go back to the first position and create another new one so that when my video or my animation is done, it goes back to the beginning. Uh, not required, but something I like to do. Um, and then as you see, as we're doing that, down at the bottom there, all those states have been created uh, with a default of two seconds, but we can update those timing positions as we want. And then when we're done, we can calculate that anim animation. And it essentially is, um, interpolates the positions between the time given and the different new values that we've given it. And when we're done, we can then save that out as a video. Here we <coughs> We'll create an AVI file, but in 2019, we actually have a few different video op more video options like MP4 and MKV that we can um, save these videos out as. Essentially goes through the motion and calculates that so we can send this off to customers. We can send this to the management team to get, so they can get an understanding of what the, um, our design is going to do, how it's going to be able to move. Now, we don't have time to show this here, but you can if you have Visualized Professional. Um, you can actually save these motion studies out <coughs> and export those directly over into SOLIDWORKS Visualize Professional and create a realistic um, animation of these, um, of these videos that we've created with the Make Controller. So really cool stuff we can do with that. I mentioned there's certain mates that are available to, um, that are available within the Make Controller. Uh, they're listed here. You see it's the angle, the distance, the limit angle, limit distance. And then specific uh, types of the slot width and path mate, right? So obviously, if it's floating free, we can't define it. If it's locked in the center, we can't. But if you chose the distance of the percentage option within those mates, those can be controlled through the mate controller. So what this is going to do is allow you to more easily control and position those mates. Another thing we didn't have time to show here today, but there was an option there to create configurations. So if you want to have those different positions at different uh, create configurations of those different positions, just a click of a button, and like you want to put those different positions on a drawing, it's really nice for that. All right, and lastly, real quick, we'll take a look at the um, magnetic mates. Um, this is used for like, facility layout if you're laying out a plant or like an office space, um, or any modular type design. Um, so let's take a look at how these work. I'm going to open up my next assembly here, which is that office space that we were just looking at. This works really well for like laying out a plant with um, like conveyors, um, robots, stuff like that. So we have this modular design here. And how would we make this into place? Right? We'd zoom in. We'd make those faces together. We'd come to the bottom, mount the mounting faces together, and then come in the back to fully define that um, three different coincident mates we have to do. 
Then if we want to move that, we have to break all those, move those around. With the magnetic mates, they do just that, right? It's like those magnet to toys that your kids have, right? You just pull them apart and find the next mate to snap to. Um, it makes it real easy to um, make these modular type designs and design changes. Just bring my next part in and snap it into place when it finds the next uh, magnet that it can snap to. Bring in the set of drawers and we can really get a nice customized um, overview design um, of what we're looking for. We can have multiple ground planes. Uh, so like you have different floors in a plant, or in my case here, we want to add another um, monitor mount to the tabletops. I can go ahead in and you can see I can toggle between the different magnetic, those mates uh, within each of the components and just snap that into place. This one I'll go ahead and let's say I want to move it over to the other side. Or you can see just next one it finds, it just tries to snap into place. I can toggle back and forth between it to get it to line up how I want it. So how are these um, created, or how is it doing this? Um, it's utilizing what's called assets within the assemblies or the parts that we're, they're using. Um, it's just uh, in that sub-assembly here, we're going to use this asset publisher. And essentially, what we're defining is the ground plane, what's the bottom face that's going to mount up there, and then create the connection points, which is simply choosing a point or an edge and the direction that we want it to go. And we can add that connector in. So it's as simple as that to, to create these um, assets. Um, so facility layout, plant layout, right, that sounds like really big assemblies. Another really nice benefit of these is they can take advantage of speed packs. Because you have the option to create a speed pack there inside of this um, asset. And what that does, we don't really get that into that in this uh, presentation, um, but essentially removes all of the other detail except for the faces needed for mates. So if I come back over into the assembly here, um, I'm going to go ahead and just change that uh, sub-assembly here to use that speed pack configuration. Now, we've really simplified that at the assembly level here. I only have access of, to those um, specific faces that we need to make that or position that into place. And graphically, I can see it, but all the other detail is gone. So it's a, a unique, uh, specific tool, but for um, like doing that type of layout, right? It avoids the standard mating of having to zoom in, zoom out um, to make all those small little mates in these large assemblies. Um, eliminate um, the need of having to break those mates to move parts around so you can really quickly and easily create these modular designs. And then again, with the large assemblies, are right, utilizing the speed packs as well inside of these tools um, and really enhance that large assembly performance even more. All right, so just a quick recap here. Uh, looks like we're just about out of time. Um, but creating those standard mates quicker, right, instead of going up into the command manager, right, the, with first with the context menu, then utilizing smart mates, and then those common components, taking that a step further, utilize mate references. Um, when those mates just aren't cutting it, right, we have the more advanced mates and then the mechanical mates as well for creating that motion or creating those essentially like multiple um, standard mates, but all, in, all within one tool there, within one mate. And then if you have use for creating like uh, that mate-based motion or um, creating a modular design, really take a look at these newer options that we have available to us, the mate controller and the magnetic mates to really um, enhance the, the assembly creating process. So with that, looks like we're just about out of time. Um, open this up to, we're running a little low on uh, time here, but if we have any questions, Chris, I can turn it back over to you. Sure, thanks, Ryan. I think um, my favorite has got to be the magnetic mates. Um, having those things snap together is really nice. And, yeah, I'm a big um, fan of those. Yeah, just a reminder that if you have any questions, uh, be sure to type those into the chat. We've had uh, a couple of uh, questions come in, and I've taken the liberty to try and address those, Ryan, and uh, I'll okay. go through those, and then you can back me up or correct me if I'm wrong, but um, we had someone ask about uh, mate references e uh, example for the stove and knobs uh, and wanted to lock the orientation by having a parallel mate uh, to adding that parallel mate to one of the knobs. Basically, to, it sounds like to lock it in place and uh, my answer basically was, you know, we, we could do that with a named mate reference. So if you had two components that both had a mate reference with a, a the very same name, when you bring those together, it will solve all three of the uh, mate references that you've, uh, you, that you've used to define that. 
Um, whereas if you didn't have a name may reference, it would look for the first one. If it couldn't find that one, it would look for the second one. And if it couldn't find that, it would look for the third one. So if you, if you didn't use the named mate reference route, uh, you may have to add one after it's been placed into the assembly. So I, Ryan, I don't know if you anything nope, that. Exactly right. Yeah, we either is well, another step further with the mate references, as you just mentioned with the mate, named mate references, but also for those concentric mates. Um, I, I kind of breezed past it really quickly, but you can right click on the mate folder and just say lock rotation and the concentric mates should all um, then be locked in the in position. If you need to act a specific position, then yeah, you would either go the route, the route that Chris mentioned with um, the name mate references or utilizing the plane as you, as you mentioned in your question. Okay, we had another question about the width mate and uh, the question was, was there a specific order uh, to click the faces if you pre-select the four faces. Um, and I said there wasn't if you use the pop-up tool. So I do that a lot myself. Pick the four faces, a little pop-up uh, menu will have the width made on it, and pretty much that's it. So I don't know if you had another workflow nope. that uh, you could... Nope, exactly right. Yeah, that's the nice thing about extra stuff on top of that is the order doesn't matter either. Yeah, because who wants to keep track of that, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> so maybe um, make sure you're trying to pick faces there. Start with faces. Uh, that's what I always tell folks uh, in yeah. uh, training. So, And then let's see, you had one more here on the magnetic mates. If a part has that set, can it be bypassed if needed? And I hadn't had a chance to uh, address that one, so maybe you can tackle that one. Uh, so you can, that in the assembly, you can turn off whether the magnetic mates are being used or not. I mean, it's, a, it's an overall, I guess, um, assembly feature or uh, property of the, of the assembly, whether you have those turned on or not. Um, for one specific part, I don't believe so, but I'm not 100% sure on that. If there's one you don't want to have to utilize magnetic mates, I'd have to look into that one further. But I, I don't think so, but, but possibly. But in general, it's an overall assembly um, uh, yeah, property think, that you define, turn on or off, I should say. I think you could um, place it in there where they're not the magnets aren't activated, and then put whatever mate you wanted on there if you wanted sure. to go that route. Yeah. Um, let's see, one more question here. Are the limits, are there limits with doing these in certain programs? Is it limited to versions? Of, so can uh, all this be done in standard SOLIDWORKS, or is some of the stuff limited to professional or premium? Yeah, no, everything we did today is in SOLIDWORKS standard. Yep. Um, it's year might matter for some of them. Um, but as long as it's, I think none of those were newer than 20, I think it's 2017. So as long as you're on 2017, you should be able to do everything we did today. Yeah, the breadcrumbs to me comes to mind. It's one of the newer things that, um, you know, were introduced. So um, that would be the thing. Yep. Yeah. Breadcrumbs and then I think the magnetic mates were both 2017. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to post our uh, YouTube channel in the chat window. So a copy of this um, presentation will be uploaded to our YouTube channel in the next couple of days. Um, and so I encourage you to uh, take a look there, take a look at some of the other videos. We've, we're building our video content there. Uh, sign up to subscribe to, the, to that channel, and uh, you'll know when we have the newest uh, content out there. Um, you know, we'll make one note, Chris. I, I quickly mentioned that we didn't have time in this presentation to talk about the speed packs more, but I believe we there, I believe one of the videos out there is a assembly performance uh, webinar uh, that goes into those a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. So um, be sure to check out previous uh, webinars on our YouTube channel, as well as uh, upcoming uh, events that we have on our our website. So. Um, Ryan, do you have uh, an email or something if somebody wanted to follow up with you offline? Sure, yeah, my email is just rfield at cati.com. If anyone has any questions, um, please feel free. Um, you know, we'll make one note, Chris. I, I quickly mentioned that we didn't have time in this presentation to talk about the speed packs more, but I believe we there, I believe one of the videos out there is a assembly performance uh, webinar uh, that goes into those a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, so... Um, be sure to check out previous uh, webinars on our YouTube channel as well as uh, upcoming uh, events that we have on our, our website. So um, 
Brian, do you have uh, an email or something if somebody wanted to follow up with you offline? Sure. Yeah, my email is just rfield at cati.com. If anyone has any questions, um, please feel free to reach out to me with that. Okay. Well, it looks like there aren't any other questions that have come in, so we're going to go ahead and end the webinar. We thank everyone for coming today. We know that your time is uh, important, and uh, we certainly um, hope that you found some things that you can use in your day-to-day -day work that it will improve the way you're working with SOLIDWORKS. So uh, with that, we're going to end the webinar. Thanks for everyone for coming.